Hello and welcome to a brief getting started tutorial for the Godot Road Generator. My team and I have been building this while working on wheel steel game with the primary use case of procedural highways and back roads. It's made to be extremely flexible with some exciting capabilities that are not often seen in road generator plugins. So far it's been built for Godot 3.5. The Godot 4 version will come out early next year once we reach feature completion. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started with your version of Godot 3.5, go ahead and go to the asset library and search for road. You can then select the Godot road generator and go ahead and press download and then install. It's been set up so you don't have to worry about unchecking any of the boxes. Go ahead and install everything. And then once you get the okay, go to project, project settings, plugins, and then enable the plugin. You should see 040 or higher. So let's get started. The Godot road generator, if we open up a 3D scene, primarily adds a few road control nodes that you can see in the add menu. To start off with, we're going to use the road manager, which is meant to be essentially the route for your road. If you find when you add the road manager that you don't have any icons, try saving your project. So we'll do demo here and then just reload to make sure that your icons have come through. With that now working, we can see we already have some helpful indicators saying that there are no road container children. So the idea is that a road manager is controlling or a parent for all the individual roads in your scene. So one road, think of it like a named street. If we go ahead and enable the add mode with the road manager selected and then left click anywhere in our scene, we'll see that a road container is added with a default name of road 001. If we continue to click in the screen, you'll see that we have our first road point added, which essentially is a slice or a cross section of the road at one given point in time. It defines a number of lanes as well as the width of the lanes, the shoulder size, and so forth. If we were to tap again, we would see we have our first road. And so that is the basis of creating our roads. It's designed so that if you have any colliders with collision meshes already in your scene, when you tap, it will snap to that terrain, which makes it very convenient to work with. The individual road points are designed on top of spatials. So if you go back to the select mode, you can transform this spatial like you would any other spatial, including the rotation. And if you actually find it more convenient, you can go to local mode so you can easily move it along its own axes. And you can see it's automatically tiling the number of UVs so that you never have any section between two road points which has an overlap or a partial UV. And so we can continue to add more roads either by going into the road add mode over here, or we can even use the editor panel over here to add another road point. And then you'll see we have a few other options over here. So here we can change the number of lanes. So I can, for instance, change it so it's one fewer lane on either side. I can select the previous road very conveniently and continue to press it like so. Or if I go back into the select mode, I could actually transform the number of lanes in the 3D view itself by just dragging out this blue circle icon. Uh, it actually gives you a preview of where these lanes will show up once you've been adding them. And maybe you want to go to the prior node again and match the number of lanes on this side, for instance. It's very convenient to get very customized roads in your scene. And like I said, all of these parameters are per road point. So if I want to have a larger shoulder over here, maybe the shoulder needs to be very wide, I can just set this to be four times larger. And then maybe the gutter profile, which represents how far down the edge of the road goes, maybe that needs to go down quite a bit further on both sides. And you can see it's just simply interpolating from this road point to the previous one. In the future, we'll have bulk settings so you can select the road container and edit all the road points all at once coming in a future version. So at this point, we are in pretty good shape. You can see that we have our road, but in some cases, you want to connect two roads together. And so that's where, again, the concept has the road container is containing one road. So we want to have multiple road containers to have multiple roads connect to each other. So going back to the add menu, you can click to add another road container automatically. Or if you have any of a road selected, you can actually go to the road menu and simply add a container that way. You'll add it to the origin of your scene. And maybe it's helpful to have it centered around where we're going to be creating our road points. But go ahead and go back into the add mode. And let's say that we have our road over here that has some 
number of road points that we're going to just kind of bring over this way. And so at this point, we have two roads that are not connected to each other, but they're both in the same scene. And so we want to connect them together. And that's what the add connection tool does for us. So if we were to go ahead and hover our mouse over the body of another road over here, it would actually connect these two together by creating a new road point here, which acts as an edge to this other container over here. This is very convenient because it means we can save this whole road container as its own prefab scene, which we can reuse in other parts of our game without having to redefine or copy the nodes entirely. This would also be the way you could create your own custom prefab sections of roads with your custom geometry and so forth. To prove the fact, we can even go over to the material resource in our road container. Let's go ahead and make that unique. And then if we just go down to the albedo, we can change the texture color a little bit and we'll see that it will actually update for our road. So go over here and then press the refresh roads. We'll see that it is automatically getting this new darker texture. So you can see this would be one way to create another road that is a dirt road or something kind of like that. One final callout is something that the road generator does provide for you is the concept of AI lanes or road lanes. And so if I select on any one of these road containers, you'll see in the options over here, we have generate AI lanes, which is off by default. If we tick that on, and then also tick the box for draw lanes and editor and zoom in, you can see that we have these paths that are automatically added to the road, which indicate a direction of the traffic flow, as well as some other details, which if we were to add a road lane manually, you'll, you can see it's simply just a path where you can define points like any normal internal curve. So I've just added another one here floating in space just for demonstration. But you can see it has some useful properties such as defining the left lane, the right lane, the next and prior lane, as well as being able to reverse the direction in case you you know, wanna flip the, the way that your roads are going. So this is a tool or utility that just makes it much easier to create AI traffic in your game this doesn't come with any agents or anything like that at this point. It's just a utility that you can use in order to look for in your game to have your traffic follow the roads. In the road container, you'll see that it does automatically give you a, an option to define the node group that all of the lanes will be added to. So they're very easy to fetch in the future. You can also get at the road lanes by connecting to a road points road segment, which is not visualized in the editor and then the road lanes from there. And that is the gist of it. In the future, we will have support for intersections as well. In the meantime, you can always use the functionality where you save an entire branch to a scene. And then for any given road point, you can actually disable Create Geo to place in your own geometry instead. Be sure to raise any issues if you encounter problems on the GitHub. And I hope you enjoy using this road generator and stick around as it improves and eventually migrates to Godot 4.